From the Center for Business and Industry Building at Dutchess Community College, the Television Production Club presents What the Falcon with your host, Tyler Ruvo. Welcome to What the Falcon, or as we like to call it, the not-quite-so-late show. I am your host, Tyler Ruvo, and I'm sort of a knockoff Jimmy Fallon, if you're into that kind of thing. I grew up here in Poughkeepsie as an average, ordinary person. I like to relax, take long walks on the beach, put drugs in strangers' food, and hunting for the occasional seagull. Now, I'd like to stop the crowd. Please look under your seats. Brush away the years of dust and stale pieces of popcorn, and you will find our budget. Now, with this budget, we'll be interviewing a whole host of people, from the president of Dutchess Community College to, hell, maybe the president of the U.S. So it's very helpful to have your support. We'll be interviewing staff and students around the campus about important topics and not so important topics. That's for you to decide. We have skits and games and performances. We like to keep it original around here. We're going to be having a very special guest tonight to kick off our first episode. And then later we'll be showing you the entertaining footage that our field team has gathered. They covered footage that includes uh, the very important coverage of the election to a new show coming at Dutchess Community College and a very interesting uh, gathering that's been taking place around Poughkeepsie. They'll be continually searching the campus for anything to show and anything interesting. So be sure to be excited for what our field team brings out. And of course, later tonight, we'll have a musical guest, Christian Ivanko, who when you see his guitar skills, it's just amazing. Well, anyway, we are going to have a very awesome guest. The one, the only Martin Scorsese. What was that? We don't have Martin Scorsese. Who the hell do we have? What? Uh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the professor that made it all happen, Patrick Huber. Welcome hey, to the show. Yeah, how's it going? It's going good. It's great to have you here. And just want you to introduce yourself to the audience. All right. Well, I'm just, uh, you know, Patrick Huber, uh, kind of an adjunct professor here at uh, the community college. And, uh, yeah, I'm here to teach students uh, how to be in the media business. All right. And you are the man putting, making sure that all this happens. Um, what kind of you work in here? How long you been working here? Uh, I've been working here probably for uh, two years now. This is my fourth semester. Um, basically, I'm a COM 103 teacher, which means I, I teach the art and craft of editing. So, you know, everything avid is basically what I'm trying to convey to the students, to love it, live it, <laughs> use it. All right. And uh, it's like, what? as an editing professor, do you feel that, like, you're really having an impact on the kids? Uh, I think... My number one job is to get people interested in using the program. Uh, you know, Avid is one of those things that was created probably, you know, in the early 80s, and it was meant to solve kind of, uh, you know, different types of problems, right, um, that were happening around that time for, for film editors who were, who were transitioning into digital. And so uh, some people, you know, nowadays, younger students kind of look at it, and it seems outdated. But it really isn't. It's one of those programs that uh, kind of got it right the first time, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Uh, it takes a little longer to learn. Uh, it is a steep learning curve. So my job is to basically uh, get students to be interested in, in the program, to really kind of try to dig deep on their own and just kind of learn how to, to use it. Because Avid is basically, you know, an industry standard. Uh, major companies, you know, still, still use it. Um, and it's one of those things where... Uh, if you learn Avid, you can basically learn anything else. And what got you into the media business? Uh, well, the media business, it was kind of uh, when I was in high school, I uh, went to kind of one of those uh, special assemblies where they showed us a video and they showed us kind of what we could do at uh, the local uh, technical school. And one of the things uh, that was on there was the communications program, uh, showing students working with cameras and being in front of the camera, behind the camera, uh, dealing with technical stuff and from that moment I just kind of uh, explored the option of going to this two-year program and getting into the media business and, and seeing what I could do um, and it kind of just uh, clicked from there so <laughs> all that from a school assembly my school had yo-yo tricks <laughs> um, so 
what have you done to, like, what have you done that you're most proud of since you started working at Duchess? Um, yeah, I think being an adjunct, it's kind of a, you know, a journey, especially when you first start with a, a new program. Um, so you kind of identify who the student body is. Uh, you have to kind of work with the, the goals that are set forth, uh, you know, to you from the, the administrators and from your bosses. And uh, it's really kind of discovering how you can, uh, you know, teach students uh, in the, you know, most efficient way uh, to really kind of get all the, the requirements out of the way. Um, you know, I, I think it's, uh, I've done a great job of kind of getting students excited about kind of doing more work. And I think that's kind of the biggest goal is mm. students have to edit and re-edit and edit a third time and, you know, really kind of pick up a camera and go out there and shoot stuff. Uh, and the whole point of being here is to encourage them to kind of maybe put down Transformers and some of these other things that they're watching. Mm. Uh, maybe video games can, you know, take a pause and really just kind of go out there and, and create media uh, and figure out ways to, to do it where um, they're excited with the end product. Hmm. And do you feel like you're seeing that drive here? Uh, you know, I, I definitely uh, feel that I see the drive in, in a lot of students. Uh, I see other students that just uh, I feel need to be encouraged more. Um, and, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, some students that see other students kind of achieving things, they'll kind of jump on board and follow suit. So I think it's a matter of uh, kind of helping to grow the, the communications program, uh, the community. And, you know, just uh, kind of have the students encourage themselves to, to do work. Hmm. You hear that, students? Stay late and do your work. Now, what was it that made you want to be a professor? Um, you know, being a, a professor kind of was something that I never thought about uh, before I was talking with Dana, the, the head of the program. Uh, she was uh, looking for an editing teacher and started talking to me about uh, the possibility of me coming in and, and teaching it because she knew I had work experience, uh, you know, more than five years using Avid, um, you know, at ABC, you know, broadcast news editing. Uh, so she kind of, um, you know, said, hey, you know, why don't you take those skills and try to help students kind of get into the program. And, you know, I thought it was a challenge, you know, something I never really thought about. Uh, and maybe it was a little bit of an egotistical thing, but I thought, you know what, I could actually do that challenge, and I, I think I can do it well. And so I'm going to you know, either sink or swim, and I'm just going to do it. And I'm either going to fail and you know, move on and kind of uh, you know, see if I had the skill or the knack for it, or I was going to succeed and uh, really have to consider, is this kind of a career path that I can further explore? Mm. And tell us more about your job at ABC. What do you do there? Uh, so at ABC News, uh, I basically just kind of take content that's already created. So Good Morning America, their, their morning program, or uh, This Week with George Stephanopoulos, their politics show on Sundays. Uh, I basically watch those programs and clip off uh, individual videos. Uh, it's the video on demand team, so we're creating that kind of clip content that you watch on your mobile phone or on Hulu or whatever. Uh, so it's my job to kind of write headlines and captions to entice the viewers in. It's also kind of my job to, to prepare the content and make sure that it has a good starting point, good end point, that it can hold people's attention, um, et cetera. So it's posting a lot of video. Um, it's kind of like, imagine your YouTube channel but imagine doing that for hundreds of videos a day mm. uh, in kind of an assembly line type fashion. <laughs> a lot of work there. Um, so how, how'd you get into this job? Did you have like connections in the city that helped you out? How did all that work? So yeah, with uh, ABC News, um, a couple of my friends uh, who actually attended Dutchess Community College with me, um, they kind of uh, had other friends that kind of uh, were in the company. And it's kind of like a, a little bit of, yeah, networking. Uh, whenever the department that I work for needed um, someone to come in, uh, there was kind of a call for resumes. And, you know, they would just spread the word to their group of friends and everyone would submit their resumes. And then based on, you know, obviously y your experience and skills and stuff like that, they would call you in and you'd do the whole interview process. Um, for me in particular, uh, I was working on this uh, documentary as an assistant editor 
with one of my friends who uh, basically worked at ABC News. Uh, and this documentary was about the Alaskan rodeo. Um, and it was about a 16-year-old girl whose dream it was to win this championship in this rodeo. And during the course of this whole kind of season that the, uh, she was competing in, uh, the people that were running the organization were driving horses from the lower 48 states to Alaska. And for whatever reason, all the horses that were on this trip died. Uh, they weren't properly taken care of or whatever the case may be. And what we're going to do to edit that documentary is we were going to um, basically kind of show how this, this tragic incident with the horses created a scandal and kind of split the rodeo organization and kind of led to uh, the odds being stacked against this young girl in terms of her dream of winning the championship. And so it was a very interesting documentary, and I was just kind of doing the assistant editing work. And, you know, uh, my friend basically, that call for resumes that ABC does, was like, hey, they're doing it again. And I submitted my resume, and eventually I just got called one day, like, hey, we need someone tomorrow. If you're free, you got a job. There was no interview process for me. Uh, it was just kind of happenstance. They had someone like either walk out or they just needed an extra body. And so they gave me a trial run, kind of that baptism by fire. Hmm. And, uh, you know, I've been there kind of ever since. All right. And uh, so more about your independent stuff. You uh, you put out a uh, video called Eco Tuna. We're going to cut to a clip of that right now. Two cents on the crumb. I'll take six. Seriously? So like, yeah. Hey, can I borrow seven crumbs? Where are you going with this? I'm going to sell the seven crumbs to Honda for 12 cents. You're trying to short guacamole. Hey, you can't short guacamole. I mean, this is ridiculous. The same rules do not apply in this situation. Damn right, we're starving! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Stop it! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Nobody move! Guys, look at what we've reduced to here, okay? Uh, Fletch, what's next? What, you gonna steal candy from babies? Maybe a properly invested lollipop would help the parents pay for the child's college education. What are you talking about? Your kid just can't take random shit off the street and turn it into some kind of security. Are you saying the sandwich has no value? That's not what I'm saying. Tell your stomach that. Go ahead, but my stomach's not hearing it. Gentlemen, do you not see how important we are to the world? We are its wellspring of abundance. And if our bellies aren't full, the whole world will starve. Even split? If you want to see more of that clip, we have a link for you down below. Now, Patrick, what was your message behind what you're trying to portray there? Um, I think with EcoTuna, uh, my friends and I, we basically kind of co-wrote it in a group, and we uh, also kind of uh, you know co-produced it and uh, co-directed it, and it was really a, a big collaboration amongst uh, all my friends who had just graduated college, and this is our first film that we were going to do outside of, of kind of being a student. And, you know, the whole time period was uh, when the economy kind of uh, collapsed and uh, we were in that kind of uh, recessionary period. And we just got this idea of having four financiers who are out on their luck, they're in an alleyway, uh, but they can't really give up the old habits of swindling people out of their, their hard-earned money. And so we set up a scenario where uh, they're around the burn barrel and they're kind of like thinking about how they can kind of take advantage of the situation. And they see this homeless guy with a uh, molded up tuna fish sandwich and they just go to work instantly, not missing a step from their old lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, comedy pursues. It, it's meant to be a farce, uh, meant to be funny, and uh, I hope people enjoy it. And the big question, what's coming next for Patrick Huber? Uh, you know, for me, I think I'm kind of in a holding pattern. I'm going to be continuing to teach, uh, trying to get students uh, very interested in the media business and teach them as much as I can uh, and get them to, to create their own work. Uh, and then right now I'm kind of at ABC News. Things are, are pretty steady. I'm probably going to uh, continue to do that as well. Um, 
And then, you know, it's uh, hopefully I get back into some screenwriting. I, that's what I went to school for. Uh, and I hope to, you know, have some projects uh, ready to go uh, in the future and, and be produced. All right. Thank you very much for coming on. Next up on What the Falcon, we take a look at the Rocky Horror Picture Show's auditions for the upcoming performance and talk to DCC students about the very first presidential debate. Even later, Christian Ivanko performs for us in the studio. This is Ethan Colombo, and I'm outside Duchess 101, where the Apocalypse Group is now auditioning for the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Let's see what's going on. I'm going to need Anthony to come play with me. The cult classic film is ready to excite the Duchess Community College campus with another often messy and outrageous performance that's guaranteed to make you laugh. Students are ready to dress up and embody some of our favorite characters of this very strange tale. The story is about Brad and Janet who just got engaged and they end up mysteriously at this castle. And there's a guy there that's a tranny and he has sex with everybody and they all have Lucky. sex together. It's Space aliens from Transylvania who are on Earth who get down freaky. Unfortunately, the people who live in the creepy Frankenstein castle happen to be creepy, who are having a party, and it goes on from there to mad scientist creating life. And there's a lot of partying, a lot of half-nakedness. Oh, Should I yeah. just do the short part? It's sex. <laughs> <laughs> it's sex too, yes. And then they all turn into trannies, and then... Spoiler I don't think that's how it works. But that, that's, the, that's the movie. <laughs> and the rest you'll have to come and see. The Apocalypse Cast annual editions attracted a diverse group of the DCC student body, both familiar and new to the show. Everyone is always welcome, and the energy that the participants bring make this show a long-lasting tradition at the college. We've done it so many times now. It's been Duchess for the past 17 years. Most of us are pretty comfortable in our skin. When I first came to Duchess, I came to the auditions just to watch but I fell in love with it and I've been doing it every year since. When I heard that they were doing Rocky Horror I figure I love acting. I like Rocky Horror. I always wanted to play Magenta. I don't know just just fun and vulgar and that's just to me. It has no filter. No filter plus no filter equals more no filter. I love it. Well if somebody told me they were nervous you know to make themselves more comfortable tell them kind of just you got to drop your inhibitions and take that moment and kind of uh, just let yourself shine. Most of the time we will tell our audience, our uh, auditionees to picture everyone in their underwear. Most of the time we are running around in our underwear, so it's really not that hard. Kind of when you've been doing the show with the same cast, you all kind of become like a family and you support each other. And because a couple of our friends are directors of the show, we support them any way that we can. And I want to do this show over and over again uh, because of the love of it, the the craziness, the creativity, the costumes, everything is over the top. So we're all family here. We all love each other. Um, we're looking to expand the family too, you know, get people from Duchess more involved with the show, hopefully. And um, yeah, and just expanding uh, the Apocalypse cast group in general. How lucky we are to pop your cherries at the Rocky Horror Picture Show. What did you think about the debate? The first debate. When it comes to Hillary, Hillary's more of a person that reflects, and she's more of the person that thinks about it, but she just can't really seem to get the young people into it. But she was she was very unprepared, and she was just like, she, she was, as always, she was just soup sandwich. When Trump just like takes what he wants to say, no matter how stupid it is, no matter how dark, no matter like how idiocracy like it is, and just puts it in your face and says, yeah, I'm gonna do this, it's just slander back and forth because all the news and media outlets, unfortunately, they've already picked a side. They're misrepresenting facts that could be taken differently. Both of them are not good candidates at all. I think they're a disgrace to us. I think they're both, they both tell lies. I don't think they give us the right information. Yeah, and it's kind of sad when your country reaches a point where you're voting for someone just so the other one doesn't win. Do you think either one of them are a good candidate? No, not really. I was for Bernie. You cannot stump the Trump. The Teflon Don, it's simple as that. He's going to develop more of a sophisticated personality because he's going to be able to correspond and communicate with the people in his class. <laughs>
Stick around for What the Falcon, Christian Ivanko performs next. Ladies and gentlemen, Christian Ivanko with his original song, Risk It All. There's a shadow hanging over me Disrupting all the thoughts inside my head You've been waiting hauntingly Hoping that I let myself give 